Hey guys, we're back in my shop. I'm gonna take apart a microwave today. I think I'm gonna use the transformer for something uh, like a spot welder, which is something that I've always had a use for. But there's a whole bunch of other kind of really cool stuff inside a microwave. I'm gonna show you how to take it apart safely and uh, salvage some parts from it. Stick with me. <laughs> Today I want to get started on a project that I've been meaning to do for a long, long time, and that's uh, building a spot welder. The first thing we're going to need is a transformer that we're going to take out of this old microwave. Now you can go online all you want and see these guys make these uh, spot welders with the transformers, but what they never show you is how to get the transformer out of the microwave. We're going to figure out what it's going to take. I've never opened up one of these, so this is a new experience for me as it is for you. Um, but uh, I just want to show, share with you how I go about problem solving, troubleshooting, and figuring out how to disassemble. First, first thing I did was I just pulled it all the way around here and saw that this is all one piece that goes around the, uh, the, uh, the, the top. We just undo all the screws that we can find that are directly connected to the cover. And then, I'm just going to see if that'll pop off. It does. It does. And this should just pull right out, shouldn't it? Yes, it does. There's a transformer right there. I see, I see it. It's on the bottom. This is what we're going to try and get out. First, oh, there's a motor. That's a, that's a handy to have. Remember that. Up here is a capacitor. And uh, we're going to see if this actually has any kind of voltage on it. Nothing. No, so there's no charge left in the capacitor. So that makes me feel a little bit safer. So I'm, I tend to just unplug Everything that I can, I like to leave a lot of leads on it. Just, I'm just, I'm, I'm working here to uh, isolate the transformer wires, and I just want to keep as much as I can with it. So I'm just going to hold on to this. This is going to be heavy. Okay, I'm going to take the power cord. I can get it off. There we are. I'm gonna keep this. It might be important. Yeah, fans are always good. Beautiful. One of the things I want to salvage is on the bottom. I saw it from underneath. And it's this, the little motor that turns the turntable in the microwave. Uh, it runs at 120 volts. With any luck, it's just going to pop right out like that. That little motor is going to come in handy. I know it's going to come in handy. Okay, so we went inside the microwave. We removed a transformer. The other thing we pulled out was a cooling fan um, and the capacitor. I kept the control board with it because I wasn't quite sure if it was actually something that I'm going to need. Uh, I also kept a 120 volt motor that turned the turntable and then I uh, salvaged the light and this is 120 volts as well. So my next step is to uh, test all of these. Well this is the uh turntable motor that I pulled out of that microwave. It works. Man, is it ever slow. Three RPM. Three revolutions per minute. Okay, next up. And next up we had the, uh, the fan. Let's leave that there. Let's see here. Then works a lot faster than 3 RPM. Good. Okay. 
Next thing, you got the light, the little light bulb. Yeah, I don't know what you're thinking. It's just a stinking light bulb. But what's handy is that it's it's already got mounts, right? So plug that in. Yeah, light works. Good, good. And here's the other thing that I found we're going to connect. These were uh, door switches. There was two of them. Okay. So I'm going to plug this into that. Just for... Uh, just for testing purposes. Okay, plug this back in. Just to show you how this works. The light is off. Until that happens and the light is on. Right, so that micro switch is normally closed. take this one here and we'll plug this one in so if that one was normally closed this one should be on until you press the button when you press the button light goes off these are handy things to know because sometimes when you want to wire up a circuit you want the power to be on until you close the door like in the fridge where we're gonna have lots of fun playing around with this stuff Capacitor, I'm going to store that in a safe, dry place. i um, not going to be using it for this project. So, when we get the transformer here, we're going to be uh, modifying it a little bit because we don't need this coil. We're going, to, we're going to get rid of that because all I want to do, all I want is this one underneath. Don't want that one. I'm going to make my own. I guess I gotta cut that somehow. So to all these guys that you see on the internet, and when they cut this off, all you see is nice openings, uh, that's a lie. That's not how it works. Because the copper wire gets so crammed in there that it's like one solid mass. Okay, so I'm going to put that on the drill press. We're going to drill that through. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to try and drill into that copper and see how far down I can drill. Yep, just as I thought, I'm going to be pulling up a lot of wires. Alrighty, so what I'm doing here is getting the copper out. You see I've done it on the one side. I'm just going to quickly show you how I've done it. I'm just going to lightly tap that in there. Just hammer that copper through. Just like that. It's the first stage in preparing the transformer. Yeah, I was hunting around here and I'm looking for some of this, this stuff. This stuff's golden. It's battery cable stuff. So I'm going to be using this as my uh, lead wire. The way that this transformer is going to work, when you're spot welding, a spot welder traditionally uses low voltage but higher amperage. To achieve that, we're going to put less windings on the secondary coil yet we're going to be using a thicker gauge wire so we're going to be dropping the voltage when you drop the voltage the amperage increases like it's it's and it's the amperage that is going to do all the welding So I've got, I don't know, I don't know how many hundred coils, hundred wraps are in the primary coil. But we only got two on the secondary. Okay, so I've wired up the transformer. So I've got 120 volts going in. And I've got these clamps here. And those clamps 
The only reason that they're there is to hold the wires in place, but it's also going to give me terminals to test it to. Now we're going to plug it in. We're going to see what kind of voltage we get on the, uh, on the transformer. It's going to hum. Humming's okay. Cracking is not, but humming is. So we got this set on alternating current, and we're going to test here and here. And it's telling us we're getting 1.2 volts. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So if we went from 120 volts at 10 amps, and then we went to 1.2 volts, we've reduced it by 100. So we've got 1,000 amps going through this. Okay, now we're going to get to the construction. <laughs>